It is January 1st, 2024. Here we go. This is going to be a wild year, I can tell already. Uh, but I uh, wanted to respond to a comment that I got the other day on one of my videos. And the uh, wasn't a question, but the thought came up there, it was in the comment, that white men of today are not nearly as tough as they were back in the great generation, back in World War II. And uh, no doubt World War II saw some great flying aces, tank aces, commandos, and all the other guys, you know. I won't go through all the different names. You know them if you studied World War II. Um, well, I'll say a couple. Mick, Michael Wittmann, uh, the German uh, Tiger tank uh, ace. Um, oh, what was his name? Uh, oh, I can't think of his name. Gene Kelly, Commando Gene Kelly was another one American. Um, uh, I cannot think of his name. Audie Murphy. <laughs> Couldn't think of his name at first there. But there were, there were British men, there were Americans, there were Germans, there were... A lot of men were really tough back then. And the commenter said that, uh, well, modern men aren't nearly as tough. They just wouldn't be able to do it and whatever else. And so, I guess the intent there being that the second Holocaust that's coming isn't going to be like the first one because the people back then were a lot tougher and men were stronger and you know whatever um well that is well that there's some truth to that i will say this uh modern men uh there's a lot of tough modern men out there they're not all pansies that sit around as couch potatoes watching you know movies from liberals in hollywood that are designed to tear them down no there's uh there are men that are very tough you get into some of the guys that do the, like the rock bouncing off-road stuff and some of the guys that ride motocross and whatever else. Uh, guys in motorsports, in other words. Uh, there's guys in the MMA and the UFC and all that other stuff. But uh, the World War II generation was coming out of the Great Depression and which toughened them up. But what those men were not going through, the white men back then, they weren't going through 60 years or more of uh, racism being directed at them, making them feel ashamed that they're white uh, like we have today. Men today are sick and tired of the uh, black on white violence and, and others as well, you know, putting down the white races and we're supposed to feel ashamed of ourselves because we're white. Um, that's ridiculous. And we see the crimes that go unpunished. We see all the injustices that happen and uh, we're just supposed to be so ashamed and we're some kind of a terrorist group because we're white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Wasps, you know, oh no. That's angering. You know, we see the Black Lives Matter nonsense that goes into cities and burns down buildings because they didn't like the way an election went or they didn't like the way uh, police handled a matter or something. That angers us. We see uh, people disrespecting uh, police officers, when the law officers are truly acting in accordance with the law, that's angering. Uh, we see our borders being overrun with illegals. We see our veterans being kicked out onto the streets to make way for people that shouldn't even be in this country. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that tick us off right now. A lot of things. <laughs> Having a hard time going down my trail here the ice and then the wet snow on top of it you know kind of bends things down but um so uh white men today have uh, some real pent-up anger issues and you know the mistake that people make is they underestimate they think to themselves all oh, these white men they're they've just been pushed pushed down knocked down and we can just tell them what to do and make fun of them and whatever else what you don't understand is that white men, um, most of us just want to work and uh, provide for our family and go fishing, go hunting, whatever. That's what most of us want. We don't want to fight. Um, we're not, yes, we are fighters by nature. God shall enlarge, enlarge Japheth. We fight and things, we war. But um, for the most part, we just like to live in peace. We just want to be left alone. But uh, you keep pushing the white men to the point where they get uh, their back up against the wall, they start to get angry. And then things go very bad for whoever's 
uh, pushing the white races. And that's what's going on right now. And you can say, well, the Jesuits are the ones building the alt-right. Well, that's true. There's some of that going on, definitely. But you know what? Um, I also think it's a spiritual movement. There's definitely something spiritual behind this whole thing that's uh, pushing white men to get ready for the new right that's coming. And one of you let me know, a couple of you actually put it in the comments, I didn't even know about this, this 2025 program or something, I forget what it's called. And it's basically to restore the Constitution and to, you know, restore rule of law and kick out the illegal aliens and everything. Praise the Lord if that happens. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things that could be happening. But you say, yeah, but Brother Brian, it's going to lead to the Nazi movement. Uh, well, then that would fulfill prophecy. Because you see, God wants to bring all the Jews back to the land. So he can reveal himself to them. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book of the Bible. Um, you can't do that if they're not back in the land. So God brought the nation of Israel back in 1948, using some very wicked people to do it. Papal, uh, Jewish people, Martin Luther and his uh, the Jews in Their Lies book called them uh, Caesar's Jews, or Kaiser Juden, if you want to use the, the German there. So we like to call them Papal Juden. Um, but uh, they're brought, they're, they have a country to go back to. See, back in Martin Luther's day, there wasn't a country for the Jews to go to. There was no land of Israel. I mean, geographically it was still there, but it wasn't there in terms of an actual country that they could flee to. Now, it's there. World War II, it wasn't there either. So you couldn't say to the Jews in Germany, you need to go back to your land. There was no land for them to go back to. But now you have Jews here in America that are using usury to get all kinds of wealth and money, which is completely against Scripture. Usury is only supposed to be done to the strangers in their land. In other words, if you're in Israel, then you can use usury on somebody that comes to live there in the land of Israel. But you can't go to other people's countries and use usury to get rich. So all these Jews are in very terrible sin. And the reason we call them papal Juden is because a lot, of them, a lot of them are yoked up with Rome. You see that in Hollywood. They'll marry Roman Catholics. I did a whole study on that. Um, so very sick, very disgusting that they would take the, the fact that they're holy chosen people and just completely sell out to the devil. But they're going to be paying for that very soon. But to say that uh, I don't think we're going to see any kind of a powerful white resistance because white men are such cowards and everything, oh, I wouldn't bet on it. The other thing is, too, you have white men of today have been raised on violent movies, violent video games, a culture of violence. It wasn't that way in World War II. I remember seeing a thing years ago where they actually said that they had a hard time getting a lot of the soldiers in World War II to uh, kill. It was very hard for them because they weren't used to it. Uh, men today are used to it. Uh, they've been doing it all their lives. Uh, another difference between World War II generation men and men of today here in America um, is that uh, World War II generation, they might have had a deer rifle, shotgun, 22 bolt action rifle for a small game, but that was about it. There was no real need for uh, semi-automatic rifles. Now as the world is changing, as our government can't even protect us from school shooters and whatever else, men here in America are arming to the teeth. And uh, quite frankly, myself included. Um, having uh, high-powered rifles and whatever else, the American Patriot movement um, has men in it that are more, uh, more armed, better equipped than even the military itself. Our weapons are better than theirs um, because, you know, military, you have the, you have to get, you know, tens of thousands of weapons and you're going to go with whoever can win the contract. They provide you with the cheapest stuff. I mean, mil spec, yes, I get it. I understand that. But you know what I mean? If you're ex-military uh, veteran or whatever, you probably have rifles now that were better than the, are better than the type that you had in when you were in. Say, well, they're not fully automatic. Well, again, if you understand real fighting tactics, uh, fully automatic is mostly for cover fire. It is not to actually engage the enemy all the time. Um, 
a lot of special operations guys, they set their guns to semi-auto. Um, select fire, or whatever you want to call it. I shouldn't say select fire, but semi-auto auto fire. So you're boom and refocus, re-aim, boom. Not just praying and spraying. Uh, so, to say that uh, that there's somehow no danger in modern white men because they've just been um, effeminate, effeminatized, if that's a word, and they're sissies and whatever else, uh, that's a big mistake. Uh, there's a lot of hatred building, and I'm, I'm around it. You know, I go to the gun shops and things and hang out at the gun shops. You know, I mean, not all the time because I'm a father and a husband, but uh, when I go and I see the guys coming in and their whole life is guns, you know, and talking to one guy and he's talking about how, you know, I never have guns. I'm never without guns now. Just guns all the time. I practice every day, you know, always shooting things. I mean, I live in northern Maine. There's, It's very remote up here. Uh, so... A lot of guys are ready. Uh, they're just waiting for the order or whatever, the go ahead to start pulling triggers. And when they start pulling triggers, it's going to go very bad for the people that are in line, uh, that are trying to push them around. Um, so again, it's not a matter of racism. It's not a matter of white men stand together against all blacks or something. No, no, my no, no, my no. There's some really wonderful black uh, men out there in America that love America just as much as the, the white men do. Uh, it's not a racist thing, but um, you'd have every right to stand up for your race if it was constantly being put down and uh, supposedly made into being a terrorist thing and whatever else. It's disgusting. And um, I, for one, don't put up with it. A bunch of nonsense. So, uh, if you're Jewish out there, Understand that this ministry is not your enemy. I'm not anti-Semitic. Not at all. I've taken a lot of heat over the years because I'm very much for the nation of Israel. But uh, not because it's a wonderful saved nation. Not because it's a nation that has received Jesus as their Messiah. No, no. Um, I'm for the, the nation of Israel because it's part of end time prophecy. But if you're Jewish, man, you better get out of this nation. Because... Uh, the new right has been, is being built. And I've talked about it for years, um, and it's going to come. There's no question about it. There's no, well, maybe it won't come, and maybe it won't happen. Oh, it's coming, and it's coming very soon. I think if the uh, papists, the uh, Jesuits and things, if they try to put it off for another four years with uh, liberal lunatics like Biden, um, they're, not gonna, they're not going to make it. You're going to have uh, white men finally say, okay, enough. We're going to have to start taking things into our own hands. It's getting ridiculous now. Now's the time to bring in a right-wing, charismatic leader like Trump, um, who's not really right-wing. He's actually a liberal city boy from New York City. Um, not really a right-winger. Uh, he's come out, said a lot of things that would easily prove that. But he's an actor. He's a good actor. And he knows the right things to say. He can read speeches very well. And he's got the charisma that he could come out and say, enough is enough. We know we're not going to put up with uh, terrorist organizations like Black Lives Matter burning down our cities and whatever. Until we can restore rule of law, I'm going to be getting the military out there on the streets or whatever, he'll say. Um, we need to fund our, our good police forces and up armor them and everything else. And... And we could see a Nazi Holocaust number two um, very easily a year from today. Um, so, well, maybe not a year from today, but, you know, into January a little bit when the next president of the United States officially takes over for the previous one. So that's what's going to happen, I believe. I don't believe that they're going to do another liberal um, president presidential administration. Uh, if they would have war, they might be able to kind of come in and say we have to suspend the elections or something like that. But Biden doesn't have a chance. I mean, that guy, talk about, uh, I don't even know how the guy made it through the entire time here. It's a miracle that he didn't drop dead. And I mean, he still could. Then we got Kamala. <laughs> oh boy. 
what a wonderful thing that would be. So, I'm do it this way a little bit here. Um, you know, what is the child of God supposed to do in this time? Well, what we have to do is we have to be outspoken. We have to uh, not put up with all this political correctness and all this other wickedness. And we have to come out and make our voices be known and say, you will not marginalize us. You will not say that there's no power there with the Bible-believing movement here in America. We are white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, if that's what you are. If you're a, a black brother and sister or sp Hispanic of some kind or Oriental, whatever you are, you say, uh, I protest things. I'm not with the Protestant Reformation, you know, the reforming the Catholic Church and all that. No, no. But I do protest. I want to have a right to protest. I have a right to freedom of speech. It is a God-given right, not a constitutional right. The Constitution just is reaffirming what God gave me, the right that God gave me. And I will not go down quietly. You will not marginalize me. You will not silence me. If you shut me down on YouTube, I'll go someplace else. If you say, well, we'll censor you here. We, you're not allowed to talk here or whatever. I'll go someplace else. I'll figure some other way out. So the best thing that you can do, you wicked uh, Jesuit papist devils, is you better, uh, you better leave place for us, Bible-believing Christians. Don't even think about trying to come and get us and put us in camps. It's not going to happen. The power of the Holy Spirit will protect us from you, and um, you will not just uh, silence us and take over our nation. Uh, this nation was founded by Protestants. It was not founded by Catholics. And that's so important. And of course, a big part of this whole agenda is they're going to, you know, try to unite Protestant and Catholic with a common enemy. And there's plenty of common enemies out there that uh, Catholics and Protestants could join together and fight against. And, you know, if you're fighting against the system and you see Catholics fighting against the same thing, well, okay, fine, wonderful. But don't ever join with the Roman Catholic system because it's Mystery Babylon. America is not Mystery Babylon. I get so sick and tired of seeing that too in the comments. Oh, America's Mystery Babylon. No, it is not. America is not a city that sits on seven hills. America's colors are not purple and scarlet. <laughs> Done whole studies on that. Deep studies in the scriptures. I don't know. I don't know. God help you. So, uh, those are my recommendations. Um, don't don't uh, bow down to this whole... If, when the alt-right system comes in and the crazy men are out there and there's a lot of killing and, sl and slaughtering and everything else, um, remember your place in it, Christian. Uh, defend yourself, all right? That's fine. Uh, personal defense is totally fine. That's why the Lord said to his disciples in Luke chapter 22, he said uh, that you're to sell your garment and buy a sword if you don't have one. You need personal defense, all right? The time of uh, the millennial kingdom and the peace and everything, the Sermon on the Mount, that's not right now. Okay, there's nobody's beating their, their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks right now. That will come after Jesus Christ comes back and settles things. That time is not now. All right, now is the time of war. Now is the time of fighting. And we have to fight. We have to be here until the catching up of the body of Christ. And then the time of Jacob's trouble will start after that. Again, I've proved that for many years. I have lots of studies. If you're just a closed-minded uh, buffoon, well, can't help you there either. But um, that will be it for this video. Let's go forward in victory, brethren. Let's not uh, go forward with our shoulders slumped and defeated. And Well, I guess it's just going to get worse. <laughs> Let's not do that. Now, uh, we're going to have some great victories this year. Want to see people get saved, genuinely saved. Get see people turn back to the King James Bible, not these modern stupid versions. Oh, it's too hard to understand. We have to make it more effeminate and whatever, and, and take out the, you know, he and him and put in they or something, uh, like the new NIV does, and a bunch of the other satanic new versions. Uh, we're not looking to the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus manuscripts to get our Bible. No, thank you. The received text. With over 99% of extant Greek manuscripts, the manuscripts that are out there in museums and different places like that, over 99% line up with our King James Bible. The text that underlies the King James Bible, let me say that. Uh, so don't fall for this nonsense. Well, we have to have 
more accurate and better. The, the new versions are more accurate and better. Yet a bunch of Catholic garbage. So, uh, like it or leave it, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm smiling when I say it. So, I can be nasty and mean as long as I smile, according to some people, I guess. Uh, if I'm saying things that are harsh and whatever, rude, and I'm, I'm not smiling, then it's bad. But if I smile, Joel Olstein, you know, is Hello, friends. <laughs> then it's okay. So, <laughs> let's have a great year, brethren. Let's get some things done for the Lord. Let's, let's earn some rewards at the judgment seat of Christ this year, brethren. Let's have a victorious year in the Lord Jesus Christ. And with His Holy Word, the King James Bible. Alright? So, that's going to be it for this video. See you in the next one.